For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus. Um, we will have uh, availability in other languages after the conclusion of the press conference. Joining me this morning, we have Dr. Marty Fenstersheib, COVID-19 testing officer for the County of Santa Clara. Uh, Michael Ballier, director of the Emergency Operations Center uh, business community engagement uh, and enforcement branch. Um, Supervisor Cindy Chavez, president of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Chief Tony Bowden of the Santa Clara County Fire Department. Uh, we're here once again because we have some very important messages to share with the community. And unfortunately, we've had to come out uh, several times because the situation's not getting better here in Santa Clara County with respect to COVID, it's actually getting a lot worse. Yesterday, we had 512 new cases reported to us, setting yet again another record. 213 hospitalizations, including 45 new hospitalizations, yet again setting another record. Our COVID cases and hospitalizations are surging here in Santa Clara County just as they are elsewhere in California and across the nation. But we're very concerned about what is happening here in our community. We are extremely concerned about what this means for our hospital's ability to care for not only people with COVID-19, but for other people who need access to care in our hospitals. This is a time of year when normally hospitals get more full and a lot of the models and projections don't account for that. And so we are even more concerned than with some of the surges we saw, for example, over the summer. We do not want to be in a place where we see the kinds of challenges in our hospitals that unfortunately some communities elsewhere in the United States and around the world have had to deal with. And so we absolutely need everyone to come together here in Santa Clara County right now for this Thanksgiving to do our collective part to stem this COVID-19 surge. First, for Thanksgiving, we are urging all residents do not have gatherings and do not travel, period. You know that can be difficult, we know it's been a long time, but right now is a critical moment. Second, with respect to shopping and retail, we all want to patronize our local businesses, but we've got to do so in a safe manner. That's important obviously for the health and well-being of our residents that's important to avoid serious illness and death it is also important to support our local economy to re rein in this surge to do so we will be having ramped up enforcement we're engaging other partners such as county fire and many others to help with those efforts we will be looking vigorously at capacity. We do not want crowds. That in a crowded situation promotes the spread of COVID. It is imperative that people wear face coverings, maintain social distance, and that all businesses are enforcing those requirements strictly and at all times. We know that we can do this together as a community. We've done it before. We will do it again. But the time to act is now. And the time to act is now precisely because we do have so much to be grateful for this Thanksgiving as a community. And we want to be able to continue to be grateful for those so many things, including our families, our friends, and our neighbors. 
I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Marty Fenstersheim. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me with my mask? If I yell? Yes? Okay. So, as Mr. Williams was saying, we are really, really concerned. All of the metrics that we have been following that have done well in previous months are now going up very steeply. Our positivity rate in general in, in our county is rising, and especially in our most affected communities, in the Lat Latinx community, it's rising even faster. Our case reports have told us that our numbers are higher than they have ever been. If we look back in July when we were wor really worried about an increase then, we saw 385 cases as a maximum in July. And as James reported and as we have seen, our numbers are now much higher. We were at 512 cases today. Tomorrow may be higher and we expect that to be the case. Hospitalizations. We need our hospitals. Not only is this the winter season when we see more flu, but we're expecting to see more COVID cases in the hospital. And they only have a limited number of beds. We can't depend on our counties next to us because they are under the same stress and strain. They can't provide us with beds in their counties. So we are on our own and our hospitals are hurting at this point. We have got to do what we need to do to protect them. Social distancing. So what can we do? The basic, the basic is, how do we save those hospital beds? We save those hospital beds by keeping people out of the hospital. How do you keep out of the hospital? You keep from getting infected. I know the messages are the same. We're tired of it. We're all fatigued, but we have to continue on. Social distance, stay away from people at least six feet. Try not to gather in. Try to limit the numbers of people around you. And I have my mask on and I keep it on all the time because recent studies have even shown that this mask is so important and it can prevent 60, 70, 80% of infections. And, then, and, and some new data has also shown us that the majority of times when we are infecting others is when we are not experiencing any symptoms whatsoever. Perhaps up to 60% of the times when people are infecting others or, in, or are infectious themselves, they have absolutely no symptoms. So if you're worried about staying away from somebody because they have a cough or they look sick, be more worried about the people that are, near, that are close to you that have no symptoms. And we sometimes think that our family members, our friends, we know them, they're okay, they've done the right thing. Not the case. We need to take responsibility for each other and take care of each other, and this is what we have to do. It's just not that hard to put on a mask and leave it on. As far as our holidays are concerned, we're hearing really distressing data that people are traveling and that's not good. We need to take this time, this holiday season, to just stay at home with our families, keep the numbers very small, maybe next year. The hope is that next year we can enjoy our Thanksgivings with our families and our winter holidays also. But this year we just have to basically be more strict because it's gonna protect your family, yourself, your coworkers, and it will allow people to not have to go into the hospital and not fill up the beds and we will save lives. I can't stress this enough and I urge everyone, in order to save lives, please take the responsibility of doing it. It is not so hard to wear a mask. Do it this year and next year I think things will be better. Thank you. Good morning, Michael Ballier, the Director for the Community and Business Engagement and Enforcement Branch here in the Emergency Operations Center. 
I'm here to just reiterate what we said earlier this week, which is our team will be taking an enhanced enforcement approach in the coming days to help stem some of the surge of what we're seeing right now. It is critically important that businesses that are operating have filed their social distancing protocol and as a consumer that you understand the expectation that business has on you and that we ask you to honor that. You can look up if a business has filed their social distancing protocol on the county's website, which is sdp.sccgov.org. Our enforcement uh, officers will be looking at a variety of things, but in particular, we'll be looking at capacity limitations, uh, making sure that stores aren't overcrowded, uh, making sure that those social distancing protocols, that orange check mark has been posted, and that the business is committed to, to doing the right thing. We'll also be looking at uh, face coverings and enforcing face coverings uh, at the business locations. It's critical for uh, the employees in those locations as well as members of the public to ensure those precautions are being taken. Uh, we have also announced that as part of our enhanced protocol and enforcement, we will be suspending the grace period that we uh, many times provide to business owners, again in the hopes of ensuring that they are well prepared in advance of a potentially busy shopping season. Our goal continues to be compliance with the health officer orders and in fact uh, just building upon uh, much of the education and outreach that we've been doing for the last several months are now at a point where it is vital that we ensure accountability at every level. It's important to note that enforcement officers will not be asking for money on the spot. Business owners that are assessed a fine will be provided the appropriate instructions on how to pay that fine. And in addition, our enforcement officers will be uh, easily identifiable. They will have appropriate identification as well as uh, identifying vest um, that will clearly mark who they are. I just want to again you know point out to everybody that at this point we really need everybody's assistance in ensuring a safe shopping season and I want to appreciate some of our partners such as Chief, uh, Chief uh, Bowden who is here to assist us in some of those efforts by being some of our eyes and ears out there in addition to some of our other partners throughout throughout the county and so I'll turn it over to Chief to say a few words. Good morning, I'm Tony Bowden, Fire Chief, Santa Clara County Fire Department. Thank you for being here today. Um, I just wanna reiterate um, some of the comments that uh, you have heard so far and, and just add um, a little bit more from, from the fire perspective. It's been a tough year. Uh, we're all fatigued. Um, our firefighters are fatigued from a very difficult wildfire season that include dealing with COVID-19 during that wildfire season and our healthcare workers are fatigued as well. And what we've been saying around the firehouse is COVID-19 fatigue is a real thing. But this is a pretty amazing county and I'm very proud and honored and humbled to work for this county because of the resiliency that Santa Clara County has always exhibited. But time, the time today is the time for all of us to rally. And I want to provide you with one acronym, the very first one I learned in the fire service, and that was TEAM. Believe it or not, it's an acronym. Together, everyone achieves more. It's not big efforts, it's little actions. And together, those little actions combined will help this county, again, be the resilient county it, it has been and get through this pandemic. But it will take all of us. Santa Clara County Fire is very happy and proud to support the county in the efforts through this holiday weekend to ensure that our businesses are in compliance and keeping limitations on the folks for the health order into those businesses so that we can save lives. So with that, I will turn it over to Supervisor Chavez. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Bowden. And I do want to say thank you to all of you being here today. And what he said is right. Like all of us, we can do something about keeping people safe. So what can you do this weekend? I know for many of you that um, shopping and Black Friday is a part of your tradition, your holiday tradition, getting those deals. 
here's what I want to implore upon you. One is, let's not crowd into any store. Know that you're going to wait and let's bring the, just the knowledge that we're going to wait. Be patient. Bring a book, bring your uh, iPhone, bring something to read, bring a chair if you need to and you can't stand a long time and you're going to be outside of a store waiting to go in. What we want to make sure of is that we're creating environments where everybody is safe. We're doing the safest things we can do for each other. And I also just want to remind you, we have a lot of essential workers that don't have the option of not going to work. And if you are behaving in an unsafe manner, you're, you're putting the person who's uh, putting uh, groceries in a bag for you, you're putting the person who's stocking the shelves, you're putting the driver who's bringing that food uh, to those stores, you're putting the clerk who's helping you uh, choose a gift in danger. So let's be kind, let's be patient, and let's do this together. The last thing I want to say is that I, I just want to acknowledge something that Chief Bowden said that I think is really, really critical. When we think about this holiday, at least for me, I think about gratitude. And I am so grateful to each of you who've really done what you can to keep yourselves and your family safe. I'm grateful to the healthcare workers who haven't missed a beat, who are working really hard now, even as our hospital beds are filling up. I'm grateful to the members of the EOC who've been getting information out in every language imaginable, haven't had a day off, haven't had time to spend with their families. I'm grateful to the people, the men and women, the fire department and our police officers are gonna go out and code enforcement officers to make sure people are being safe. And I say that because I think in, a, in an abundance of gratitude, let us treat each other like we are family because our lives really do depend on it. Thank you. Okay, hey everyone, we're going to head into question and answers next, but before we start, I want to let everybody know that we do have PIO representatives to provide one-on-one um, -on -one interviews and statements in uh, Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese um, after this uh, press conference. We do have um, Assistant Health Officer, um, Dr. Elsa Villarino, who will be providing a Spanish language statement after the Q&A portion is done. So we'll start with Q&A um, to make sure everyone's questions are answered. I will be calling on folks. I see you over there. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn that over to um, James to provide an answer. I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. So, the, can you repeat the question? So, repeat the question? So the fire, how long will the fire department be part of this enforcement campaign? Oh, okay. How? And an example of how it will work. Okay, so the question is, how long will the fire department be part of this enhanced enforcement effort? Um, because earlier was mentioned um, some time limit, and then actually how that would look in, 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 in operation, right? So, okay, I'll turn it to you, Father. Uh, sure, for me this one's a, a pretty easy one since we're working in partnership with the county. So as long as the county is stepping up their enforcement efforts, then Santa Clara County Fire Department as part of that will we'll continue to serve in that capacity. Um, again, we still will be re responding to calls. So as crews have time when they're out, they'll be checking on businesses to ensure capacity issues. If they see an issue, we report right up through the chain to ensure that uh, a compliance officer is notified and that we can take action. Again, it's as long as the county um, has this push, Santa Clara County Fire will be supportive of it. Well, we're going to have Michael Ballier provide a little more information about that. So in terms of how long we'll be doing the enhanced enforcement, at this point it'll be at least through Sunday. And at the end of Sunday, we will be reassessing uh, what we're seeing in the community, the reports that we're receiving, and decide where we go from there. But I would foresee that it will probably go on a, a longer as well. Uh, and so again, we don't have any strict timelines in place. Uh, but again, what I will say is that at a minimum, it'll be going at least through the end of Sunday. Are they going to be more reactive in response to a community call? 
So a couple of questions there. Number one, how many enforcement officers? Basically, where are they going? And um, is it gonna be in response to concerns? And the answer is that we will be visiting many of your popular locations throughout the, the county. So places where you might normally see people gathering and shopping is where we plan to be as well. Uh, in terms of the numbers, you know, we will have quite a few people out. Uh, and again, just depending on what we see, we will continue uh, that effort throughout the weekend. And again, our hope and our goal is to see that people are in compliance and that we don't have to issue many fines. Uh, but the reality is, is that we, without a grace period, it will be an instant fine uh, that will be payable, you know, within the next couple of weeks. And so again, you know, our goal really is to ensure compliance, uh, but we'll be, we'd be doing that in the form of issuance of fines. Yeah, so the question is, after the issuance of the fine, essentially is there a process where that can be challenged? And the answer is yes. There is still an opportunity for people to appeal their case, and they can do so with instructions on what we provide them. Next question? And another oh. clarification question, just to double check that there are compliance officers, and then on top of that, uh, support from County Fire? That is correct. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next question? Do you have any other questions? All right, so it looks like it's a pretty short Q&A session today. Um, we're gonna have Dr. Elsa Verino provide a Spanish language statement. Good morning. Um, I was just going to add to all the things that you heard before. I am privileged to work in Santa Clara County since last year. I chose to come to Santa Clara County to provide services as a medical public health officer. Um, there are a lot of our health workers, nurses, physicians that are in the hospitals tending to the people that are getting sick. We need to keep them healthy we need to consider that we're all part of the same community also the people that work in the long-term care facilities caring for the most vulnerable population the elderly they're very much at risk for getting covid if we do our part as a community if we stop gathering uh, use our face mask make space for allowing that our behavior affects others we will go through this crisis together and we will come out on the other side. Uh, please do your part. Do not gather. Do not travel. Celebrate safely and help us all do our job taking care of the people that are getting sick. It is a very important personal and community task that we have at this time. Thank you very much. Um, agregando en español, muchísimas gracias por escuchar este mensaje que les traemos este día. Este, este mensaje es un mensaje para toda la comunidad. Queremos que, decirles que estamos en una situación de urgencia. Es una urgencia. Los números de casos han subido de una manera estrepitosa. Tenemos más casos que nunca hemos tenido antes. Hubo 512 casos el día de ayer y esperamos más el día de hoy. El porcentaje de positividad, que es un número de casos positivos cuando se les hace la prueba, es cada vez más alta, especialmente en la comunidad Latinx, pero en todas las comunidades. Esto quiere decir que nuestros hospitales están rebosando de gente. No hay casi espacio ya. Hay menos de 100 camas disponibles en los hospitales. ¿Qué podemos hacer juntos para evitar la crisis? Podemos quedarnos en casa, podemos distanciar socialmente, podemos usar la mascarilla, podemos estar contentos de que estamos vivos y de que vamos a superar la crisis juntos. Por favor, todos en la comunidad de Santa Clara, Escuchen muy claramente este mensaje. Tenemos que trabajar juntos para superar la crisis. 
protejamos a nuestros vulnerables, a nuestros ancianos, a nuestras enfermeras y nuestros doctores en los hospitales y protegémonos a nosotros mismos porque somos responsables de nuestra propia salud. Muchas gracias. Uh, cualquier pregunta, estamos a su orden. Gracias. Okay, everyone, this concludes our press conference today. Thank you so much for coming out. We do have PIO representatives who could provide one-on-one -on -one con um, interviews after this. For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus.